do, 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 do. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the live stream. You got Tim and Katie here. This is our fifth live stream. I, I have lost count now, but that it seems right. like it's been going on forever. It's not been going on very long at all. Who have we got this evening? I did post a comment to get us started. I should probably ask if you can hear us. <laughs> That's usually how we begin now since the horrible night where the everything went wrong. Incident. It's a tragic incident. So let us know in the comments if you can hear us. I did ask earlier on if everyone would comment with their favorite roller coaster because tonight we are going to be talking about all Coasters. things roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad we have... Chad and Vanessa from Two Tickets to Adventure in the audience because I know they love to talk about roller coasters and they've actually got on several more significantly more yeah. coaster credits than we do. And that's actually what we're going to talk about tonight is coaster credits. So if you don't know that term, stick around. You're about to learn it. Vanessa says her favorite is Fury 325. Wow, mad respect. I don't know how my body would handle <laughs> Chad that Chad says his is the coaster that is actually running, which is fair because... Half the time, they're not. Yeah, oh, <laughs> hit a bad maintenance. And we have season. sound is good. I have a feeling that it's going to be kind of a slow audience to start, and that's totally fine. If we just have Chad and Vanessa in tonight, they know a lot about roller coasters, and I am totally down to get their take on everything we have to say. But be aware, you guys, we are going to start fights. I know. I actually <laughs> don't know if I agree with everything Tim has to say about coaster credits. But I put it in the presentation anyway. Yeah, but... <laughs> you might see marital discourse here on tonight's live I don't live know stream. if I agree with everything. I was thinking about it today. Because he showed it to me last night. I was like, hmm. All right, you guys. To get things started tonight, just want to throw this up here as I usually do. Make sure you are following our socials. We have an Instagram and a Facebook presence. We also have a website where we mostly just post blog articles, SEO, and opinion pieces. But Instagram is where the real deal is, where we go to post everything that we're doing while we're doing it. So if you're on Instagram and you're following us on Instagram, you can get a little insight into where we are and what we're doing while we're doing it. And that's a sneak preview for you because sometimes the vlogs that come out are weeks behind. So um, Facebook, everything kind of gets pushed to. It's not where we focus. So if you're a Facebook person, unfortunately, you should probably shift over to Instagram. Well, we're trying to do better. We're, they're all meta now. Anyway, we're trying so. to do. Yeah, they are. Everything's meta. Jay and Sam in the audience. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And they just moved. So I yeah. know they're busy. Thank you for popping thank in, guys. Thank you so much. So good to hear from you guys. And Jamie and Ari from Keeping Up in Disney. Thank you for joining us. Guys, if you missed the initial prompt, comment with your favorite roller coaster because we're going to touch on each and every one of them. I promise you. So... <laughs> Do you want to go ahead and like kick things off? What are uh, we talking about tonight? Remind me. <laughs> we're talking about coaster credits. So not only are we, well, Tim is defining what he thinks a coaster credit is. And I will say whether or not I actually agree with him. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll start fights in the comments as well about what a coaster credit means. We actually learned ourselves a few weeks ago that this is not a well-defined it's not well it's not it's well, not well defined. defined in yeah. the coaster enthusiast and theme park enthusiast world um there's debate about what a coaster credit means and if that is totally gibberish to you what it means to us and what it means to a lot of people is how many unique coasters have you ridden in the country and all over the world so right. some enthusiasts are up to in the thousands range i think we're this is, this is probably an, never going to get there. This but. is an ever-fluctuating number, right? Because coasters get rebuilt and torn down and rebuilt and torn down. And, and so, like, the, the actual established number of roller coasters that you can ride world, like, globally, um, I think it peaked out around 7,000 oh, when I, I last looked number. at it. And like, I think the, the the most dedicated enthusiasts that we follow and we know of have ridden maybe 1,500. Yeah. Maybe. Like that's a high number. Like it's a, and that is a very high number. Like we're, so we'll get to our, our actual coaster credit list a little bit later on. But um, yeah, basically we have stuck mostly to the East Coast. So we've traveled up and down from 
if you are you gonna count Vermont like the Alpine coaster? I don't know. I feel like I feel like that's a debate. I feel like too. yeah. Let's let's that let's, might be something we talk. Let's about. start we, getting we were into in Lake George. We went to the Six Flags Park. Yeah. So that's like New York. So we've been from top like northeast all the way down to the tip of Florida. But there's a lot that we've missed. There's a lot of parks we haven't been to. There's a lot that we even in the parks that we've been to. Like sometimes the coasters are closed. We have to keep reading. Sometimes it, there's wind and you can't <laughs> ride the coaster. <laughs> Hang on, we'll get to Pantheon. But I'm just saying, like, there's there's always reason to come back if you're counting coaster credits. Because, right. like, if the coaster's not rideable for one reason or another, if kiddie coasters, uh, which do count as a coaster credit in our opinion, if a kiddie coaster requires that you ride with, with a, a small child. child and you're two adults who don't have a small child, then technically that coaster credit is still sitting out there waiting to be claimed. So we have to go back so, with someone's niece or nephew. Whoever <laughs> needs a babysitter. Uh, all right, no, we're on the internet list. <laughs> <laughs> the internet is forever. All right. <laughs> we just need that one coaster from King Dominion. <laughs> it would let us on. Okay, okay. Keeping up in Disney's favorite coaster overall for thrill and nostalgia is Raging Bull at Six Flags Great America, which I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, because I know we've had conversations about this on Instagram, was a hybrid? Or maybe that's Goliath? Goliath is a Goliath, uh, hybrid. Goliath is a hybrid, so probably not Raging Bull. Tell us what kind of coaster it is. I do know the name Raging Bull. We have talked about it before. I know with... Um, Jamie and Ari on Instagram, but I don't know if I remember the make and the model, which is a shame because there's a lot of good, like reliable brands we, that we, we, we really like. We don't know everything. How many times have we said that? Yeah, we should probably disclaim that again. This We're gonna be starting a lot of arguments tonight on what counts as a credit and whatnot. And I just wanna say we are, we are theme park enthusiasts, first and foremost. We love dark rides, we love Water rides. We love. You train do not rides. love water water rides. But we also love roller coasters. So we count the coaster credits because they're fun to collect. But we're not actually as much coaster enthusiasts as we are theme park nerds. So take everything you're hearing with a grain of salt. In, in, I guess the word is enthusiast. I was like, <laughs> how do you enjoy? Get rides? ready to throw down, Vanessa. Jay has joined from his individualized YouTube account. Coaster is a trend? No. <laughs> I'm going to discredit that immediately. I feel like... so. The, try? No. The definition of a coaster means it has to, has to coast, right? Like that's what a coaster is. So let's, let's talk about this. Because this is going to define everything else we're going to say, right? If you're counting coaster credits, technically what makes a coaster by the coasterpedia definition which is like the bible for coaster enthusiasts um it has to be either a closed circuit or a shuttle which shuttle means it goes back and forth like a the, you know like a uh, what's the name of the one that got torn down in dorney park that we couldn't ride well, it's like ice. It's like, it's like icebreaker or pantheon. It's like it's not a complete circuit, well, but no. it yeah. it's yeah. Goes pantheon back and icebreaker. Oh yeah, I know what you mean about the shuttle. That was yeah. like the inverted. It literally, shuttle. it's just a U bend that goes back and forth, but it launches. You, you, you back think and about forth. like that skateboard thing that we've been on. Vacoma boomerang and... isn't a complete circuit. Yeah, but that's it, true. It but does it run. So like, all right, coaster credits have to coast. They have to reach some sort of momentum from gravity not from its own because like if you were counting electric power like the hogwarts train then you would also have to count casey jr circus train at disneyland right which if is something has, i actually like, looked into i was like does like that an count or, or a motor I if, think it, if it it's being doesn't pulled, count as a it does it's not a coast. ride it's a it's transportation. It yeah. could be your favorite ride at a theme park, but I don't think a train. Now, the... I think alpine coasters do count because you okay. get pulled to the top of a hill and then you coast down. You right. do control your speed, but that is not unlike a lot of other, like the luge coasters or the bobsled coasters, which we're missing most credits for. Mm -hmm. um, they also tend to speed up and slow down and not not necessarily the most thrilling ride but the alpine coasters you can control the thrill level i still think it counts yeah i would say and i think everyone else agrees so here uh chad makes a point here 
Easy if it's roll. in the roller coaster <laughs> database. Here's my problem with that, because you have those uh, those rings at Six Flags parks. I don't even like Six Flags will tell you they're coasters, but they're literally just rotating seats on a coaster. Like it's on a pipeline track, so technically you could make the argument that it is a coaster. And Six Flags does because they want to be able to say, hey, we have eight coasters instead of seven. But I don't think that's the case. And I think those are all logged in the roller coaster. Yeah, database. I think we just personally, well, first of all, we're not getting on them because they look miserable. So they're not they're not counting. We're not pursuing them as coaster credits. Jay yeah. says the Long Island Railroad is a coaster credit for him. I... Oh, Marvel Thrills is in. Welcome, welcome. Are you excited for the Jolly Rancher remix? No. <laughs> I hate Vacoma Boomerang. I am. I am. I do. Okay. So the Vacoma Boomerang, not our favorite ride. Like just the model, it's not particularly fun to go upside down backwards. But the way that they're doing the Jolly Rancher remix, which if you don't know, the Vacoma Boomerang at Hershey Park, which up till this point has been Sidewinder, is being rethemed this summer as the Jolly Rancher remix, which well, a lot of us it, saw isn't it coming. Done no, is that, oh, it doesn't open bad. until the summer. Oh. It's it's the park is open as of April second, but that particular ride doesn't open until the summertime. Um, so the the retheming into Jolly Rancher, everyone could see coming a mile away because they painted the supports like neon bright, pink and bright green. green. Yeah, it was like either you bought the Joker as an IP or you're going to Jolly <laughs> Rancher. Rancher. And I really do like to see Hershey Park moving yeah, more. Yeah, I'm like excited themed. that they are owning the candy theme yeah. at more rides with like, you know, the Reese's dark ride and candemonium and a retheming. But yeah, I, I will probably begrudgingly get on it. Oh, you'll get on it. But I, we're going to go out. Like it. So, and we're going to do a vlog on it too, by the way, you don't have a choice. I've already decided, but too bad so, you can't film because you'd see my really happy face on that ride. They've changed the ride experience a little bit. For, it used to be the, as I say, just a basic Vacoma boomerang, and now it's got like a tunnel and some fog effects. Based on the concept art, we don't, no one's actually ridden this thing, but based on what we've seen from the concept art and what they've advertised and marketed so far, it really looks like they have tweaked the ride experience just enough that you could almost, if you weren't me, consider it a new coaster credit. But I am excited to see how the ride experience has changed and decide whether or not it's something more than it used to be. And Ari and Jamie say that um, it's, an old it's a B&M Hyper, one of the older ones. It's probably, Those I gotta do some research, but I feel like it's probably a pipeline. Reliably coaster. good rides, B&M Hypers. Poseidon. I, I'm assuming you're talking about Poseidon's adventure, not the... Uh, not oh. the universal like oh yeah 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 <laughs> like See, no the walking tour probably because not, of but like the... the 10 feet of coaster because it becomes a water, the water coaster, coaster and for that's like a second our log flumes coasters since they're on a track is another good question see this is like it's not i don't feel like it's well defined even though you have some like coaster encyclopedias or whatever making bold the world's first hyper coaster or oh, twisted hyper coaster sorry it's important to add adjectives because theme parks will do that a lot. And <laughs> it's the world's tallest coaster that's on a hill. <laughs> it's the world's fastest green. coaster that goes through a tunnel. <laughs> yep. Ring of Fire. That's what it was at Six Flags America. Yeah. yeah. And I do not count it. Christina is here. Welcome to the party. Hi, Christina. We're talking about roller coasters, Christina. I know you've been on some, even if they're only Disney ones. Comment your favorite. We're having fights. <laughs> we're, start <laughs> we're starting fight. All right. Let's talk about coaster credit specifically because we haven't clear we, we've given some adjectives, but we haven't clearly defined this. So what counts as a coaster credit to I guess not even us because <laughs> Katie keeps gesturing like it's not I don't know. I have a I disagree with something. <laughs> Dueling coasters. Do they count as a credit? Absolutely. And my dueling coasters, guys, just so you know, we're talking about things like Lightning Racer at Hershey Park. Thunder and Lightning are two separate trains and they ride side by side for the first bit and then they split off and they race for the rest of the course. 
I will say those races have predetermined outcomes because the speaker gets to switch back and forth between which announcement they want to play. Half the time they play the wrong one, that's how you know. But <laughs> do these coasters, asterisk on the S, count as two separate credits or do they count as one separate credit? I know that Chad and Vanessa feel it's two different credits, one for lightning, one for thunder. What do you think? I I feel like there's a little bit of a gray area here. <laughs> there's because gray area everywhere. I, I like asked you what you thought. Because you're like, because I know you're going to say they don't count. It's one coaster. It's lightning racers or lightning racer. I it's lightning say. racer. Racing racer. That's oh, part of racers. Um, I get to. Lightning. It's called lightning racer. And that's the name of the coaster. And when you ride lightning racer, well, either side, you've ridden the coaster and it's not two credits but i feel like if the if you have a ride like space mountain or something where it's been proven that one side is slightly different than the other then you should pro probably get to count both of them if they're not like if they're not like the same like exact layout morbius loop or morbius well morbius circuit, loops so. don't count anyway because that's just an illusion but that's what they're talking about with west coast yeah and i agree glasses. with that so i feel like maybe if i looked at thunder and lightning I, it's mobius i said morbius because i'm thinking about the movie i didn't even, <laughs> the I didn't even hear just you out. say not mobius. oh the internet is forever all right go ahead anyway, <laughs> i feel like if i looked at lightning and thunder and if they were the exact same coaster just like mirrored or something then i'd be like eh. but i do feel like it's a different a different ride experience when you ride left on like, how do you know thunder. it is we, we okay we've both ridden lightning and thunder we've gone to hershey park enough that we've done this experience multiple times i cannot and maybe chad and vanessa can because i know they have been often to hershey park just like we have I can't pinpoint any difference between the two tracks, except for perhaps the sight lines. Like you go down the lightning side, you get to see. Well, you the... go like <laughs> they're staggered a little bit. I don't see lightning racer. I have a harder time justifying as more than one, but but I know for a fact that people have said like that. I don't know which side it is, but the right side of. Space Mountain is is ten feet shorter than the left side. I'm like, okay, well that to me is a different ride. <laughs> this experience. this is a super controversial. Thing. If you can pick up the track and place it elsewhere, then it's two credits. See, I think that makes a point too. I then you're talking about like if they're carnival pieces, like they just move from one. No, to one. I think it means that if you if. I understand, like, if they're not interwoven If they can operate the independently. Extent. Like, if if for some reason the lightning side is down for whatever reason, they might still operate Thunder. I don't know that for sure. But if they can operate separately, and someone mentioned Dueling Dragons, I think it was Jay. Um, I, I mean, I remember riding either side of, of that ride. Yeah, I do miss that. I mean, Hagrid's is amazing, but the Dueling Dragons was, was pretty cool back in the day. Yeah, I don't the know. Mobius loops do not, definitely do not count as dual. So the, the Mobius ones, it's easy to say like that's one credit because it keeps going right, because in that's, research, it's and then you not, continue riding. And Twisted Colossus is like the definitive rides. Mobius. <laughs> I would say for this, I don't think either, like both of us are gonna come to a consensus. And I think it's more important. I think at this point that this is more important, like what <laughs> individuals count as, like we're gonna say- Welcome to the party. <laughs> like. like we don't we don't count the ring of fire but you might and that's fine yeah so and then i mean it's what is the coaster credit count if not like your your own little like journey of oh racer 75 at king's dominion which is it still racer 75 or is it just racer now I thought it was racer when we got it, but maybe it's so yeah. that was that was one of the best racing that was such a fun ever coaster. experienced. That was so well I was, maintained. That was so much more fun than I thought it was going to be. But I will. I I counted the one credit. And I checked the box, and I was like, if I ever go back, great. If not, I got the credit. Yeah, that is my feeling. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> like, if you shit. ride it, you get the coast. If you ride the left side whatever green side whatever you want to call it you get the coaster credit but if you go back and you're able to do the other side i think you could put another tick down there it's not that you didn't i 
I would. I think Vanessa and Chad would agree that if you ride one side of a dueling coaster, you get the credit of riding the coaster. You don't. It's not like you've only done half of it. But where is that? End? You don't get point five <laughs> of a coaster. But where does but that end? But if you end? get the bonus, well, are you gonna argue that? Jolly Rancher Happy Town is a new coaster. No, but because, I'll get to that because, I, because that's another of the experience changes. Well, I'm arguing that it's not. Okay. That's not. I'm. I'm not changing my opinion here. <laughs> uh, I told you. <gasps> Freddie and Nicole. Guys. Oh my god! <laughs> it's so good to see you. So we were at okay. Bush story Gardens. time. We were at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, um, not last weekend, but the weekend two before. Weekend, yeah. And we waited in line for two and a half hours, hoping that Pantheon, their brand new ride, would open. Uh, it didn't for us because apparently all it takes is 33 miles per hour to shut that sucker down. Wind, wind speed. Sorry. Wind. Yeah. 33 mile per hour wind speeds to shut that sucker down, and they can't operate it. Uh, According to this, the staff tales that Freddie and Nicole got um, for 25 minutes after they get shut down for wind. Yeah. So it has to stay slow and dead for 25 minutes. And it just wasn't cooperating was, for us. We waited two and a half, two and a half hours, hours with Freddie They and Nicole waited 10 and a half hours. To get on that ride. And all only, day. And honestly, we all probably day. would have stayed with them if we didn't have We did have a tour to a attend. Tour to and that vlog is coming, which... but it doesn't have any Pantheon in it because we thought that was going to no. be a quick secondary vlog. Yeah, we thought and we were going to wait in like a two hour line to ride it and be done. But no, that didn't happen. And we did get the sunburn from yeah. standing in line we for had, two and a half we hours. We had the all but the ride experience. We got the cute experience of standing in the heat. But we got to meet Freddie and Nicole, and they yeah. were awesome. And that was, that was truly, they are our heroes now for waiting 10 and a half hours to get yeah. on that ride. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's great to hear from you. I wish we had like your contact information so we could go to war stories, but it's awesome that you're following and thank you so much for tuning in. Drop your favorite roller coaster if it's not Pantheon. And if it is Pantheon, tell us why, because we haven't ridden it and we need to know. Marvel Thrills asks if there's any predictions on the opening date for Airy Force One. Do you know what that is? I've heard of it, but I... Uh, it's I the single rail that's themed oh, to the airplane. And yes, yes, yes. I think that's coming this summer. Because it's it's half... Well... I think 2022 is the year of the coaster. <sighs> See, I, as soon as it was out of my mouth, I started second-guessing myself. So I'm going to say late this summer, maybe Labor Day. But I think... Now that I've said it out loud, it sounds ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it well, could be it could be spring of next year just to like keep the hype strong. Yeah. Because that's going in. I think. No, I think probably. Well, they, I feel like they would start making the announcements like soon if it was going to open. <laughs> ten. Hours. Ten hours. Okay, ten hours. Sorry, not ten and a half. It was still. <laughs> I'm gonna round it up to the half. <laughs> Oh, oh, thank you guys. It's so good to hear from you. <laughs> guys, this is one of the best things about just doing the doing the vlogs. And traveling. Sometimes we vibes, just yeah. meet people and we've met a ton of our YouTube friends already. So it, yeah. this is just worlds colliding, which is <laughs> awesome. How do you feel about clone coasters? Oh, I know they count as di different ones. So that's so that's like they have like a Batman invert at every single Six Flags park, right? Yeah. And it's you it, it's often the same coaster, sometimes the exact same layout. But only a couple times do they call it Batman the Ride twice because other parks have Batman the Ride as like a flipper, like a 4D flipper that right. rotates you. And so Six Flags is notorious for doing clone, clone coasters, rides. but all the Coma Boomerangs are essentially clones, except now Hershey Park's got a unique one because it's got a tunnel with fog and some sort of weird sports system. And so I'm excited for that. Um, but yeah, you've essentially ridden the same ride in a different location. Is it a new credit? If it's a different, like if it's, if it's coaster A and coaster B are identical, but they live in different worlds. I'd say, <laughs> see, this is where I kind of go back to the dueling coasters thing. like operate independently so if a, so i think of a if a dueling coaster counts then, a, then definitely a clone of the same i'm counts. slouching really bad <laughs> just realized as i've gotten comfortable i start <laughs> i was like where are you going <laughs> yeah i guess i mean that's what i'm saying different Jay, physical is like track. a different physical track it's but yeah. the experience is identical 
<laughs> what is it though? See, but this is the art. Like, if you See, make this is the why case, even we can't agree on if this. If you make the case that two clone coasters that are identical in every other way are unique credits, then you have to make the case that dueling coasters are unique because they're identical. But that's why I'm saying I feel like if I'm making the argument that clone ones count, then I right. That's what I'm saying. You can't you can't double back on this. That's, that's what. They, but that's see. He showed me this last night, guys. I thought he showed me this last night, and I thought about it all day, and I was like, I don't think I agree with him. So here I am, <laughs> dro dropping truths. A on lot. A lot day. of B and M inverts are clones. Batman the Ride is like the chief example of this at Six Flags. Like this is one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's Sorry. hard. Jay's like, I can't handle this gardens. stress. <laughs> Jay's gonna be out. Yeah, so clone coasters, I agree, are considerably a different coaster credit, but then I have the added challenge of I don't really feel like dueling coasters are, even though they are identical, but they're interwoven. Whatever. When they're interwoven, I feel like they're one, but when they're separate when they're distinct there's tons of wild mouses there are tons of bnm inverts there's tons of become a boomerangs but when they are standalone elements i consider that to be a unique coaster credit yeah. if thunder and lightning were two completely different structures i would count those as two i feel like they are different structures though. they're interwoven you can't have one without the other the ride is called lightning racer Believe it or not, it's yeah. not racist. But then I, made that I, I just fall back to before, my, but. if you ride one side, you get a credit. And if you ever go back and ride the other one, you just get an extra one. It's not an, <laughs> it's not half a credit. You get the full one. I will, extra, I will concede. It's extra credit. I will concede bonus credits. If that, Fine. we can we'll agree start, on that. We'll start counting bonus, we'll credit bonus credits then. separately. All right. So we'll have an individualized list for bonus credits. Good. We're, we're making compromises. Okay. This is what, this is surviving this is your marriage magic. and 101. Accepting influence. <laughs> oh my lord. We're always going to go back to the dueling coasters. Actually. Now, yes, it's always, well, even the reason that this is even a subject, the clone coasters, is because Taylor from Coaster Studios, who is a well-renowned coaster nut, a very young one, but a very well, like world known for his enthusiasm for coasters, made the argument to his girlfriend in a video that we watched on the public internet information. He said that the clone coasters shouldn't count. Yeah, he did. And I was like, what? No, we didn't agree with that. <laughs> what? All right, then your then your whole like what's seven thousand coasters to, to any claim. Six Flags Park. I'm kidding. I mean, he was talking. Sarah talked him down because there was there was madness. But the 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 the, the concept of having seven thousand coasters the world over hinges on Vacoma's ability to crank out fifty boomerangs at a In relatively like low years. cost. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, just keep pumping out templated coasters and if you really like the experience of one of those templated coasters then you can change the sight lines by going to a different park and experiencing it in a different position or you know you're going through the tunnel at Hershey Slightly Park. Slightly different like, theme if they ever seen. There are yeah. some actual Vacoma boomerangs that are not that template and they are themed like in Europe. Yeah. I don't know if any exist in the United States but there's like there's like a Vacoma kitty coaster version that I don't think goes upside down. Those actually look really fun. Yeah. And I want to do them. Yeah. Anyway, it is a conversation track. on theme park. This is theme park. This is th that's exactly. All right, what here I'm we doing. go. If you had two pieces of string twisted together, is that one string or two? See, Chad's just making sense to me. <laughs> These, the wheels are turning. Oh man, you got him, Chad. I would high five that's good, you. That's a good argument. High five, Chad. That's a good argument. I, I'm going to stew on it a little bit. We're going to come I'm back gonna to it. I'm going to stew on it a little bit because I, I do. Look, it's you're not you're wrapping two individual pieces of string together in that argument. I'm talking supports are built into each other. One rail literally collides with the other in terms of structure. The, the two sides cannot exist independently. But that's I, I don't know if that's how they were built. 
but for me if i think the right experience all right everyone is team katie on this it seems like well technically so. it was team chad and vanessa first it was team their chad opinions vanessa. and i jumped on board mitch i know mitch texted me that he couldn't be here tonight because he was really disappointed he wanted to like wage war <laughs> and stir up controversy <laughs> something he does best but um i will say that i know he is on the fence about whether or not to count dueling coaster credits. So I'm missing my reinforcement or like partial reinforcement. I know, right? <laughs> he would have had one little, one little. He tends to fold when, <laughs> when stage with conflicts, we'll see. He is not confrontational. I, 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 I will give you the bonus credits. I'll leave it, I'll leave it there and give you like, it's a bonus credit, but it's not the primary credit. Come for the coasters, stay for the material. Yes. And welcome back, Kaylee. <laughs> oh, Hershey's dropped her favorite. Oops, Oops, I clicked on the wrong one, but this is a good one, too. Doctors with Mitch when we were away. <laughs> we miss uh, We miss Mitch, too. Go follow Roadside Trippers if you haven't, guys, on YouTube and Instagram. Mitch and Devin are a power team. Also, Chad and Vanessa, too, in Two Tickets to Your Adventure. Pretty much everyone in the comments, just go follow them. Yep. <laughs> Find everyone's channels. Kaylee says her favorite was Mako because it was our hundredth coaster credit and it will always be special to be special to us. It's so special. It gotta we actually it ranked some of our coaster credits and we'll touch on Mako because it was one of our favorite rides. All right. <laughs> Did we not Here's cover my this other movie? Oh we come we touched on it, but okay. I'm about to I'm about to stir up more controversy. Ready? Oh man. Boop. Oh, retract, retract coasters. Yeah, so, I, chief example, Hulk. The Incredible Hulk at Universal's Islands of Adventure. What do we think, guys? Is it a new credit? The ride experience is different, but pretty much the same. Like, the actual structure did not change. The layout's the same. The layout's the same. The ride is the same, except for the new track that was And the just... music. They <laughs> added music, right? Thank you, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I need the help. He needs a little support. All right. So I don't remember what year it was, but you had ridden the original. Yes, Hulk. I've been. I, I think it was 2008 when they did the full reach. Like they yeah, basically was, tore down the entire coaster. I rode it somewhere between 2002 and 2007. Yeah. More than once, honestly. Yep. And so they they decided that the ride was getting a little bit rough and it needed to be retracked. Usually when they have a retract in there, for those who are not familiar with the term, uh, it's because the, the rails on the ride have gotten a little bit worn Morning. with age and weather and X amount of other factors. It's not like and it so, rains in Florida, right? <laughs> and so they have to come in and they have to pull up all the rails and replace them with new rails so that the ride runs smoothly because otherwise it just rattles you out of your seat. And the Hulk is not a smooth ride. It's very, it's it's butter smooth on the rail, but intensity wise, I find it to be one of the most intense rides out there because of the upwards launch into the Cobra Wall, which always messes me up. But um, when it was retracked, they did a re-theme and added all kinds of like video elements. They changed yeah, the they, music, they added screens at the top. and It was like a re, it was a revamp it ride. Did, it it did didn't change, change the, the Theme it changed the, the experience. I still say I'm I'm with Chad and Vanessa this time. I say, did the layout change? I say no. You've written yeah. the Hulk. You have written the two the two thousand the pre two thousand eight version and the post two thousand eight version. I mean, I'm but it's I'm the same not, ride. I'm personally not counting it as a new coaster credit because when, I I wrote it. <laughs> wouldn't the club? But it's not. It, if someone built this exact same. A cult coaster in a different Universal Park, which they might. I actually, honestly, don't know if like Japan has it or something. I think Beijing has it. Um, the then, new, the then if Universal I wrote, went to, Beijing. if I went all the way to Beijing and got on that version of Hulk, even if it was literally the same ride, I would count it. Yep. But because this... I wrote it before 2008 and after 2008, I personally don't feel like. I'm going to count this. But this is why I think that the Jolly Rancher remix is not a new credit either. Right. Because we've done it. We The, the ride layout has not changed. The sight lines have changed. What you see when you're on the coaster because of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And for the Hulk, like, I guess the literal definition of the sight line has changed because you see something new when you're going but up the ramp. You, but... When you start to get into the sight line argument, <laughs> this is how I think, like, 
I f- five years ago you're riding the Hulk. You didn't used to see the Velocicoaster going. Now you can. <laughs> yeah. Is it a new credit? No. The park changes. Things change. There's new trees grow up. Things get taken down. The sight line changes. It's not a new credit. But one point I want to make, Jay, and I love Jay Hong being Kong. devil's <laughs> advocate because this just makes this so much more fun. Is the other thing about cloned rides is part of part of the coaster credit collecting experience for me is traveling, n- traveling and new parks. So even if I, I mean, that's why you know we're gonna ride Space Mountain in Disneyland in a couple weeks, and I'm gonna count that as a new coaster credit, even if it's a cloned ride. And I know for a fact that Space Mountain in Disneyland is not the same exact ride as Space Mountain in Disney World. So probably not the best example of that. But anyway, I'm traveling to a new park. I'm gonna count Big Thunder Mountain as a as a new coaster credit because I got my butt somewhere else and rode a different roller coaster. So that's part of it for me. So even though Batman the Ride in Texas might be this might be a, the same if not very similar to the one in our backyard in Bowie, Maryland, I'm counting it as a new ride. And for those of you who joined tonight's live stream, you got the spoiler that we were going to keep secret until we were on the plane, just that we were oh, going to Disneyland. My bad. So you we'll know, have some vlogs coming up there. You could have just not brought it back up again. You may have forgotten. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> no one forgets Disneyland. Let's That's be true. Honest. Okay. Our current list of coaster credits. 109. This does not include bonus credits as we've suddenly we'll decided to replace the <laughs> These are 109 unique coaster credits. So there are things that we are missing and things that we have planned. This is not, by the way, a very impressive number because yeah. there are people that we know that have, I mean, we were in line for Iron Gwazi with a guy who had ridden Iron Gwazi that weekend. Like 240 times. Yeah. <laughs> 240 times. That's so he's all they did. Probably been on more coasters than we have. Yeah. He also <laughs> might not have a job. <laughs> you got to really love roller coasters to get. <laughs> but as Katie said, part of the fun in collecting coaster credits is traveling. So like when we see a fun coaster, we're like, oh, that's going to be an awesome coaster credit. And what we're actually subconsciously thinking is how fun it will be to travel to that distant location and see new things and ride that coaster and then have lunch at some cool place down the road and so on and so forth. So we are collecting actively these coaster credits and they're still climbing. We have not yet ridden. And here's where I'm going to get into semantics too, because a full wing coaster to me, we've been on Skyrush, which has wings on either side. And Katie was inquiring about whether or not the dive coasters count because they do extend you beyond yeah, well, the rail. Yeah, I wasn't but thinking only, about like, what an actual wing coaster is without a back support behind you. Yeah, wing coasters so. have to go, they're usually four seats. Some of them rotate, like X2 I would I would counter is probably a wing coaster in addition to being a flipper or a 4D. I call them flippers, but they're 4D coasters. Um, but the wing coasters are things like Gatekeeper at Cedar Point that extend beyond the rail on both sides, usually four seats, and both riders are floating in midair because the rail itself will go and turn and dive and the wings will flip all around. And it's an awesome way to collect additional Gs. I assume I haven't done it. <laughs> yeah, we haven't done it. Who knows if we'll hate it. Tilt coaster is exactly what it sounds like. There's a um, there's very very few of them right now, but there's more of them coming. And that's when they 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 take you up a lift hill like they would any other coaster. You peak, you crest along a straight line, and then you stop, and the coaster track will actually, actually bends, tilt you yeah. down. The closest thing we have done to this it's is Griffin. No. Really? Oh. Green guts. Oh, Gringotts does do a tilt. Gringotts does do a tilt track. Yeah. It does not go straight vertical, nor should it. It's very intense. Oh, oh, oh. So you're talking but, about tilts like the literally yeah, the track tilts, like bends It's literally to... like a pinball machine. Oh, it will literally go yeah. out here and go, and yeah. then drop you. And it's it looks like tons of fun, but that is the the key element of a tilt. Yeah, we have not been on tilts. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's only like eight of them <laughs> worldwide. There are more coming though, which is what's exciting. a suspended coaster? Suspended coaster would be like Big Bad Wolf. Oh yeah, 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 as yeah. As opposed yeah. to being so like a butt hanging bucket. Right. 
I was we've like, been on BNN I've been inverse, on plenty of but we've not coasters. been on. Um, yeah, Am I turning away not been too on. Much? Yes, <laughs> you tend to turn Whee! to the corner of the room to have conversations <laughs> with your subconscious. <laughs> Bobsled coaster, you'd think this would be an easy credit to claim. Now, Chad and Vanessa, tell us whether flying turns is a bobsled coaster. Because I don't think it is. I feel it doesn't actually, it has wheels and it runs into a track. And I feel like the bobsled coasters have to be free running. Like they just curvature on the outside of the track and then bring, bring think, themselves back I don't in. know. But, I think Tim is too hard on what a... Coaster semantics define is. the coaster credits man that's what we're talking about tonight and then the 40 spinning coaster which i know <laughs> vanessa hates <laughs> yeah we have avoided those six flags so magic mountain has x2 which is one of the most intense actually the most intense of these rides because it takes you up hyper coaster height and then does the spinning and flipping through fire and it's it's insane but i know they did that one and vanessa was not a huge fan like Jay's not a huge fan of the 40 spinners either. I'm not a fan of spinning at all, but I'll have to deal with it one day. Chad says roller coaster database says that flying turns is a bobsled. I'm I'm gonna wait. I'm I'll put it on as a bonus credit. I'm gonna wait until we can claim because flying turns is very unique. Now he's gonna get away it's with it. It's very unique. Phone. It's it's designed to be a one-of-a-kind coaster. So if you categorize it, I feel like it's not. But <laughs> Oh, Vanessa loved X2. No, she did because she said she listened to some tricks of the trade and didn't have a miserable time. Hates it was the Charlotte Joker, Batman, and Tumbili. It was Charlotte Theme Park Worldwide that hated X2. Oh, you're right. You guys both went to Magic Mountain around the same time. You guys and Sean and Charlotte from Theme Park Worldwide, and I got to do a lot of stuff. Because I remember I was like, I got to ask Vanessa what the tips of the trade are for not hating life on X2. Yes, Joker at Six Flags Great Adventure is indeed a 4th spinner. And we were gonna do it on our last oh, trip we there. came so close we to getting just, all the coaster credit, and now there's two more. We were just gonna do it, but then it shut down for like the last two hours. And I was, I was like, so mad, because we almost got every single coaster credit in one day, because we went at the peak of COVID, and nobody was there. We didn't even need Fast Pass to get on everything. We were just like, boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom. But guess what? Joker had We saved it for last, and then it closed like two hours early. Furious. And now they have Jersey Devil, so we'll like so have, we have to, to work back twice as hard. Anyway. Yeah, but we'll have to work twice as hard if we ever want to do an all coaster credits in one day. We have done a standing coaster. We have done a standing coaster. We did coaster. that standing coaster. I'm not Katie a fan. Katie is not a fan of standing I don't coaster. like, so if you've never been on a standing coaster, you're, you're standing. Um, there is a like, bike seat kind of thing that There's, sits between your legs, which you I'm call it sure, the relief seat. <laughs> sure um, certain riders have to look out for, but- um, She that, means dudes. I'm, I, mean, <laughs> I, I meant what I said. Um, anyway, <laughs> but that wasn't a problem for me. It's the fact that when you, you are going like upside down and doing inversions and whatnot, all the blood is like rushing to my feet in that case, which I didn't think would be a problem because, you know, you're on inverts and your legs are dangling and you kind of get that sensation. But I guess because you're standing, I started to get like a burning, tingling sensation in my feet and legs the whole time. And if a coaster causes me physical pain, I don't like it. But it counts as a credit though, right? Oh yeah, I got the credit, <laughs> one and done. Just want to be clear, just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's not oh, yeah, okay. yeah, that's... But That's I the basis like for it. our claiming things like Anaconda. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Anaconda at King's Dominion, y'all. Grab the credit and then never again. Arrow loopers. All right, we've done a lot of dumping on coasters. What are our favorite coasters, though? You ready? Our favorite credits. Our favorite credits. Griffin! Griffin! These are in reverse order, by the way. And I, I should say, too, that Griffin is a standout example of an awesome dive coaster but we're in the long haul for dive coasters around like they're they're all made as of now by the same manufacturer uh bollinger and malabar which is bnm colloquially so if you've ridden one dive coaster in terms of layout you've largely ridden them all but they're often 
themes and interwoven into their environment. So every coaster is definitely a unique credit, very unique ride. Mm -hmm. Griffin is our local dive coaster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, and it is easily our favorite ride in the park. I just say, like, probably for Bolton is a very close second, yeah. but Griffin, I think, takes the crown. Yeah. And we did get to ride Shikra at Busch Gardens Tampa. But only at night. But only at so night. So we didn't get to see everything. Yeah. We got to just... So it was still great, but the theming of Shikra is, is so cool. Yeah, Shikra has, I would say, better points for theming. Yeah. Because they go through a I tunnel. I felt and like go. Griffin may have been a little smoother, which a smooth coaster to me... It just sings. Like, you guys seen like Pacha and New Emperor's New Groove, like these hills sing, like that's me on a smooth coaster. That's a very bizarre uh, reference, but if you got it, <laughs> let me know. If you didn't get it, you're probably not watching enough Disney. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, how it compares to Shigra, I mean, if you love Griffin, you're gonna love Shigra, but you will definitely appreciate the amount of theming that went into Shigra and like going into like the big, like you dive into like a dark tunnel instead of just like, the ground um so it's it's really cool i will also say the uh water effect on shikra is about 10 times as powerful for the bystanders as it is for I think, Griffin. yeah i think you can get a, you can get closer to it oh you can so get, the kids get, to get, get i soaked. i thought i had well because i did, in my mind i was measuring the distance according to basically what i had experienced with griffin so i was feeling like I was a very safe distance when I was taking a clip for Instagram. And then this tidal wave of spray comes up from the base of the ride vehicle and comes, you can you can always tell, right? When a wave is gonna crest, if it's gonna come down right on your head. And so I was looking up and I was like, no, I'm not clear, I'm not clear. And you did <laughs> not have to go for a while. Running <laughs> like a madman to get clear. I did get clear though, you gotta give me that. That was yes. some fancy footwork on my butt. Yeah. In, in summary, Shikra is awesome. All, all dive coasters are awesome. And for those who might not be familiar, Griffin is at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. I don't think we actually mentioned that, so. I did. You did? Mm -hmm. Oh. But it was at our local park, Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Oh, well, I said it again. Pay attention. I'm <laughs> paying attention. Did Shikra have best restraints? Do you remember? I feel no, like... it had the same restraint style. Yeah, same, same as Griffin. Yep. I don't like vest restraints either. The comfort collar? <laughs> Velocicoaster. At Universal At Orlando Island Adventure. <laughs> yep. I'm going to rank this as our number two. Yeah, I'll try to say overall. For two reasons. Uh, actually, no, more no, than for two. More than many two more reasons. I would say that Velocicoaster is near and dear to us because we saw it built. It yeah. was the first, I mean, Candemonium is at our local park at Hershey Park, and we did see that one built too. So that one is also special to us, but Velocicoaster was significantly more complex. It's a longer ride than Candemonium, yeah. and it's got tons and tons of themed elements throughout, and throughout the queue too. You mm -hmm. didn't get to see any of the queue while this was being built, but you could tell as they were putting in rock work that it was just gonna be an amazing ride. Yeah. When they set set off the waterfall for the first time and pictures of that started sinking into social media, I was like this. I mean, we followed like people like, look at these velociraptors wrapped in cellophane, yeah. you know? Like you're like, oh my gosh, there's gonna be raptors. Yeah. And the raptors don't move, which is the one the, disappointing the one, element. Nah, but. And while they were putting it together, the Universal was the churro us stand. with the Twitter feed saying, it's a churro stand, don't look at it. Yeah, the churro stand <laughs> joke was, Universal wins in terms of their social Oh, Universal is some of the best in the game yeah. when it comes to they social just, media. They just win. <laughs> but Velocicoaster is also a Intamin multi-launch coaster, which is another of our favorite kinds. So and this, your boy here loves his launch coasters. Right in, right in line with our loving dive coasters as a whole and ranking Griffin where we did, I would say that Intamin multi-launches are, and I'll also um, premier rides, right, at Kennywood. Oh, the, the for Blue Sky Rocket. Rocket? It's Sky Rocket. Blue Rocket time. Tim called it Blue Don't Rocket. Don't ever go back and watch our Kennywood vlogs. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing of interest lies therein. But uh, I would say that that is another awesome manufacturer. I just love launches. He does. I, I, do, I do too. 
which brings us to our favorite roller coaster of all time ever, and it's probably never going to change. Yeah, I have a hard time picturing this changing. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, yo. I, it's just the perfect combination of everything. It's a dark ride coaster. It's a dark ride. It's got speed. The it's got launches. It makes you feel like you're flying and powerful, and it's- Guys, I cried the first time I wrote this. Yeah, if you're a Potter person, it's all about nostalgia, and it's got the IP that everyone loves, but but it's just It's a great fun. night ride. It's a great day ride. It's just it's fun. fun. It is so fun throughout. There is not a moment on that ride where you're not laughing and, and or crying. <laughs> and in Kaylee's case, where you're not wishing you were dead because it can be a little rough on motion. <laughs> but it was, I know she had fun too. Yeah. So, and I could just... I just Steam Park Foodies, babe. don't know when they're going to, I wasn't sure if Velocicoaster was going to beat this out. I feel like if Velocicoaster had a dark ride scene, it may have won. Yeah, if they had and only maybe that wasn't, had. And I, you know, I do appreciate that they weren't trying to just recreate Hagrid's too, yes. so that they could be different. But um, like, I love a good intense coaster, but you get me with the dark ride and the theming parts of Hagrid. So I love that it, if it didn't count as a coaster, it would probably <laughs> still be my favorite ride. It like, would, it would. Ever. Same so. as a lot of dark rides rank high on our list, but like a separate list. Hagrid's just crowned the coaster coaster credit list because yeah. it is the best coaster. It's, it's, it's just... literally when we, I, I just don't think there's anything else like it in the world. I got a text from my brother the other day, which I don't think I even told you about, at like 11 o'clock p.m. And my brother, for those who don't know or haven't seen the vlog where he went on Pandemonium with us, largely terrified of Paul Fast roller coasters. <laughs> so had had real trouble with Pandemonium, overcame it. We're all very proud of him. And you you guys should definitely go back and watch that vlog. It's one of our older ones, but it's, it's memorable. Um, but we got him on... Hagrid's by telling him like it's low, it keeps low to the ground, it moves fast, feels a lot of fun, it's got dark ride elements, I promise you you can handle it. And this guy, we got him on three times, Got him, he got in the front row every single time. I know, I hate him so much. You can't control that. You yeah. cannot, because it's cannot a moving, ask it's for a the walking front row. ramp. You get the seat you, you get. You have to walk on, he because got the it's, front a, row it's a on the Uber time. ramp, so God, it, it doesn't I stop, you have that. to load it. And yeah, he just by random chance, three times in a row got the front row. I, I swear to you, at 11 p.m. two nights ago, I just get a random text that says, man, I'm really feeling Hagrid's right now. <laughs> Wish I was at Universal. I could really go for another ride. And I was like, there's literally no time when I'm not really. Yeah. Yeah. Like sometimes if I imagine it hard enough, I can feel the bike between my legs and <laughs> feel like the, the like handles. Start are playing getting... the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. It's, we're talking it up. It's amazing. I don't yeah. think, I don't think this is under, like overhyping. I feel like. I know. Some, I, I've heard some people get on and they're like, oh, I was underwhelmed. And I'm like, eh, okay. It's, and it's, and that's fine. Like if you prefer Velocity Coaster or a more intense Coaster Coaster, that's fine. It just, I love Hagrid so much. Jay, I'm glad you brought up favorite non-theme as a subcategory because I am going to touch on that too. Can Candemonium is a fantastic ride and a great addition Kaylee, don't hurt yourself. No, okay. I know it's fun. If you are if you are prone to motions, and we did a whole live stream on motion sickness, which Kaylee was a part of. If you are prone to motion sickness, um, there's a lot of sharp banks in yeah, Hagrid's. It and does this a lot. Much more so on Velocicoaster. I'd say Velocicoaster ratchets up the intensity, but it lest you forget, it is a roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> it is not exclusively a dark ride. It has animatronics, which are awesome. It has light effects. It has secret elements that I'm not gonna spoil for anyone who's not been on it because there's no way you'd be ready for them. No. But it, it is a relatively intense family coaster. Yeah. It is a, a low coaster. intensity, broader category coaster. Yeah. I would say Velocicoaster is much more intense. Yes. But I know Kaylee did like it. I everyone likes Hagrid's. Anyone who feels underwhelmed was just overhyped in my opinion. Yeah. I don't know anyone who's like, oh, never again. It was yeah. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Oh no. Time for the garbage bin. <laughs> Ready? The These are much more obscure. Uh, with one exception. Yeah. <laughs> 
These no, are much more obscure popular. credits. Vakoma boomerangs we just put in a broad category. Did, have I mentioned that I don't like Vakoma boomerangs? <laughs> the sensation of... Actually, I got the mouse. The sensation of going upside down and backwards through this cobra roll. Well, it's the loop that does it for me. The it, That hits upside me, down. and then they yeah, put you, me through a cobra roll, and I just like... You come down, you go 30 up seconds the loop, of misery. And this going forward is no problem, going yeah. around the loop. And then you get pulled up, and you get dropped backwards. And I think, yeah, Katie gets messed up somewhere between the loop and the cobra roll. I don't know what happened. I hit like age 25. <laughs> And, and that was it. Everything was crap after. And that was the end of all fun forever. Yeah. So, Bakuma Boomerang's not our favorite, but we do ride. We, we ride everything. Begrudgingly for the, for the credits. Begrudgingly for the credits. Then there's Steam and Demon. <laughs> uh, this little treasure in Lake George. So, this, this is a New pipeline York. coaster, which means, as you can tell, it's got like BBC. No, no. It's got BBC, BBC style tubing that runs throughout the length of the course. And these rides tend to get old quick and require maintenance a lot. And if they don't get that maintenance a lot, they become very, very Horrible. rough. And so this is neck rattling. Six Flags Great, Great Escape. Escape in New York. Which it's honestly a charming little it's park. It's a very cute it park. It used yeah. to be, it was one of those parks that like Six Flags bought, but um, so they had like, they were some sort of like family fantasy park before that. And they had this cute little um, in enchanted forest style fairy tale land and all the, like a, they've got like a castle, a Cinderella's carriage. I do want to go back and it's, do a vlog there someday. Because yeah, it, it, I, I do remember it being very cute. We had to leave early because we had headaches and I got yeah, sunscreen in my eyes. We had and an we, incident. I mean, that was like- That was before we day, knew how to do a theme park. Day six or seven of our nine day honeymoon and we were starting to yeah. wear, wear down a little bit. But there are good coasters there. This was not one of them. Yeah. <laughs> that ride was miserable. Steven Demon. Remember how I just... said, if it causes me physical pain, I don't want to do it ever again. <laughs> But yes, Kaylee, it was an otherwise very yeah. cute park. We we did love going there. They had a, some great live entertainment. They did. We watched this guy like motorcycle in a ball. It was wild. Circus style. But, yeah, it was in like tumblers and stuff. It was it was pretty cool. You ready for our number one? Number one worst. Number credit. one worst credit we've ever claimed. It's gonna surprise a lot of people if anyone's still in. Not if they've heard me talk about it. I mean, yeah, we're not particularly kind when we Wait, tell stories about this. It's not up. I didn't put it up. Oh, okay. Oops. It's not up. Every night is like her first. <laughs> I thought you would click on it. This is why I just talk, and he does the text. <laughs> Drum roll, please. That's how enthused I am about this ride. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, Tim and Katie's worst coaster credit of all time is Rip Ride Rocket. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Awful. Mitch likes this ride. A lot of people like this ride. I don't. I. I. So was Molly from All Ears. I don't. I, I don't know. Ride. I don't know why it was so bad for us. And like people, look. I would you know love I to think? see this get new trains and retract, and then I think it might be fun. But it, it's terrible. I think the trains are awful. Sorry, um, guys. <laughs> I think the trains are awful. I think the track is awful. Tim hates vertical lift hills. I do hate vertical lifts. That is. I don't really have a problem with that. I mean, I'm not. They're, they make me slightly uncomfortable, but whatever i was we were miserable on this ride For, i mean you get to choose your like song or whatever and i think i chose like i still think about whenever i hear what is it i picked gwen stefani oh gosh <laughs> what was it it was the didn't it feel like dancing dun, 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 dun. that was the song that i picked i don't know what you picked i you picked pick? um stronger with kanye Okay. Oh, okay. So Which now, like, bad whenever music I choice, by the way. hear, I now have PTSD because whenever I hear that song by Gwen Stefani, I'm taken back to when I was riding this ride. This this ride is incredibly rough. Look, okay, look. I I will I will make a case back for forward. the novelty of it. It's a really cool idea, and I really wanted to love it. I really did. I got on the ride, and I was like, "This is gonna be awesome." Yep. But 
probably by the end of that, I, there is a really cool element of non-inverting loop, which I think is incredibly rare. Most coasters yeah. don't do that. But at the peak of that very first loop, we've just made it through the very first drop. And by this time, we have done plenty of roller coasters. We know what to expect from a smooth functioning roller coaster. This was rough. And I mean, we come out of that first loop we already have a headache. Yep, I was already miserable. And coming back down, we're like, okay, it this does, is not the greatest ride ever. It has like three mid-course breaks and each one, we weren't in the front row, so we couldn't tell what was coming next, but each one I was like, oh God, it's over, thank you. And nope, it wasn't. It, you're distracting me with your <laughs> doo doos. Um, every time it had its mid run break, I was like, "Oh God, it's over, thank you," and it wasn't. And it did that three times, and I I was so ready to get off. That's the problem: the is that the entire thing is rough. The entire yeah. ride is so rough that if you're doing it, and this was our first time, if we had done it 20 years ago, I don't or even however know how long old it went, this in, ride is. It's probably not that old because it it requires a lot of like a. a full functioning I mean, service we had, crew before we did this ride so we had watched like that jimmy fallon kevin hart video yeah, where it, looked like, like a lot of it looked like a lot of fun i mean kevin hart was screaming but he's scared of roller coasters um but we saw a lot of comments of people saying that it was rough and i was like i'm young my body can handle it and i was wrong i'm old and my body cannot <laughs> handle it I'm telling but, you, I, I got on the coaster feeling absolutely fine. Maybe a little dehydrated, but nothing new. And then we got off the coaster and I was like, I couldn't I couldn't do any more park that day, which is incredibly awful. rare for me. I was like, Things my that migraine I, is- Things that I me. like about Rip Ride Rocket. I agree with Vanessa that, that I wish all coasters had yes, music. Yes, I love the music. I, I, even, I like the choosing your own soundtrack thing. I wish more coasters just had a soundtrack. They do in Europe. Don't ask me why we can't do it here. We can at SeaWorld. Only on the <laughs> lift hill. Yeah, Manta has some. Okay, maybe music. Manta does. We haven't Ma Mako a lot of has, has some music on the lift hill. Um, I love that there's a sound. That's part of the reason why I love Hagrid's too, is there is like dialogue and a, and soundtrack throughout the whole thing. But anyway, I love the music. It looks so cool at night. It's got a cool lighting package on the train itself and it's really fun to watch, but I have not, I've not been on it since. If they ever decide they want to retrack or, or replace the train. I would do it again if they retrack. I'm there. If they retrack it, I will, I, I will I go on it the, again to try it. The, the non-inverting loop is a is a cool element that's kind of that is unique. Wow, this coaster is only what it's, year is what, it? <laughs> Thirteen years old. Thirteen years old. That's that's rough. This is what pipeline coasters do. They age so much faster yeah. than. I mean, I feel like if Universal was willing to retrack. Hulk, they might be willing to redo. I imagine they will. I, I think they. And I think it's a no issue. I will be issue. there for it. I will be there for it. I mean, they're also retracking bits of. So maybe it's on their list to do after uh, Mummy is done. Yeah. So. I do need that Mummy oh, reopened immediately. Yeah. That is. A, I, I'm the glad they though, prioritized like, that. Like, thank one, God though. they have Mummy and Gringotts in that park because this Reply goes to track, it's not so good. Um, I agree that, where is it? There are worse coasters out there, but we, we haven't probably haven't yet. ridden them yet. <laughs> All right, well, only 109 coasters in, guys, remember. Uh, honorable... So this is the standard if there are worse rides than this. I, I think part of the problem with like Rip Ride being so bad is because it's in such a big park that makes so much money. So why is it going to crap like Which this? Which plays into Jay's assertion that when Epic Universe opens, they might get rid of. Yeah. I well, don't know that they'll get rid I of will... it, but I, I think maybe you'll see it then go down for like a year's a worth long, of maintenance, long maintenance and then reopen it. Yeah. I think that's what's- Rip so... Ride Remix. Yeah, that'd be cool. Coin it. There you go, Universal. I did your work for you. But like you might expect like- Churro Stan 2.0. I don't, I don't, I'm not surprised to like Steam and Demon at a small Six Flags park that probably gets like 0.01% of the Six Flags budget every year has a coaster that is kind of crappy. It's surprising that Universal does. That's, that's, that's my opinion. 
But we know people that love it, and if you love it, that's I'm so happy. You're for welcome you. to not share our I'm opinion. So, that's part I, of the because I really wanted to love it. I just couldn't. My body hated it every minute of it. Our most intense coaster credits. I, I can't remember what was on here. I, I it's because they rattled you too much. <laughs> the memory's gone. Oh, now I remember. Ready? Badoop. Yeah, <laughs> we've only been on one giga so far. It's, so far, was, we've only been I on one giga, five. and I know that at the beginning, Vanessa, Vanessa said, said her Fury favorite, is which her. is a whole another twenty feet taller yep. than this one, and this one tried to murder me. You're looking at Intimidator three hundred five at King's Dominion, which is our very first giga coaster credit. I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it, but it was I intense. do. It, it does feel. I mean, it is intense. It's designed to be intense. You do feel like you are in a Formula One race car the because only... there is like wind whipping your ears. No, that's Formula Rosa. That's the well, Formula One race car. This is NASCAR. Yes, but <laughs> I I don't know anything. Um, <laughs> what the only other sensation that reminded, like being on Mission Space, the amount of G's that you when you're like doing the like lift off like that's what i felt like on i305 and i had never experienced that on a coaster um, i it i think it's like that when it did it well it goes right into like a helix oh or that's something, nice right? to hear bnm smoothness on fury not the intimate intensity that is really good to hear actually yeah. bnm makes the chat. smoothest coasters in the game if they get, maintain their maintenance, they stay smooth. If not, they can Most become a little. Most of them do, because B&M requires a certain amount of maintenance in their contract. Well, remember... Yeah, yeah. There are, there are always stories of parks doing it wrong. But... Some just overdue, I think, for a little while. I think it's not the Giga that did this to us. It's There's a very sharp bank at the bottom of it. Yeah. And between it being an Intamin, which is known for be, being slightly more intense and... The fact that the course layout does whip you deliberately into right. a wall of G's, yeah. I feel like. I mean, it's a, it's not. I didn't hate it. It was just intense, and I wasn't gonna get right back on it. Yeah. The line wasn't that long today, and I saw like twelve-year-olds getting right back in line, and I was like, bless. I can once do per that. Day. <laughs> no, thank you. Then. King Nika. Yeah, this is an intense coaster. Same issue, Intamin. They yep. do really big, really fast. This is the world's largest coaster. Guys. Tallest. You... I said, did I say? Longest? You said largest. Oh. Tallest. Almost the same thing. This is the world's tallest coaster. We have ridden the world's tallest coaster. It's at our home park. Not home park. Okay. Six you Flags Great Every Adventure. park cannot be our home park. It's in our... It's within DMA. driving distance. <laughs> it's in our service area. <laughs> if, we, if we choose to see ourselves as business folk, it's in our service area. Six Flags Great Adventure is only about two and a half hours from us. So, <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for tuning in. It's to make sure we can actually hear us because yeah, we've in had case sound we issues have before, issues. Before. So, um, King Deca. <laughs> is a Intamin hyper no is it hyper it's it's giga it I might not even be categorized I didn't think it was because it comes to like a um peak or whatever actually I don't honestly know see this is where we rely on other people because I don't know what if it constitutes a um Hyper, if it's like peaks at 200 feet or, or, or higher, or if it has to like start at that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's a launch. It's its own thing. Which like is called it, a launch coaster. It is. I mean, there's two coasters like it that I'm aware of, which are Top Thrill Dragster and at, mm, what's the one in Spain that I can't remember uh, the international I'm park. Gonna... It's. I mean, it is a launch coaster. Jay is correct. It's an it's an intimate launch, but it launches on a long track that goes all the way up that U bend and it's hydraulic, right? It's hydraulic launch, isn't that? Isn't that the thing? Because it no, like it's a launch bend. Well, guys, you may know more about King Kong. Oh no, <laughs> Storm Runner is the hydraulic launch. 
Yeah, Stormrunner does have a hydraulic launch, that I know. Yeah. This is, I mean, this is this is a top hat, but it's the world's world's tallest top hat. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of its own type of coaster. And like I say, top thrill dragster at Cedar Point and... Whatever that one is in Spain. Yeah, that I can't remember the name. I, I, I swear I've seen that park. I wish I'd written it down now because I feel like an idiot. But, but it's the same type of coaster. And this, the nature of this coaster makes it intense. Like you can't have a coaster like this and not have the wind whipping in your ears. I will say King the Ka has aged a little bit more dramatically than certain other coasters of its type. Yeah, it, we did it like 10 years ago. And then we did it like two years ago and two years ago, we were like, eh, it's a little bit. It's, it's rattly. aging a little bit. Now yeah. it is like a bucket list coaster credit to claim being able to be like and world's tallest it's coaster so intense done. And it's over so fast. Like you get off of it like. And you do, it typically whoa. it does have a really long line too. Yes, thank you, Ferrari Land, Red Force. That's why we have Chad and Vanessa. <laughs> That's why we need friends. <laughs> That's why we need friends. Thank you guys. Yes, that was at the tip of my tongue, but I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how to get it out of my mouth. Um, so this is the tallest of its kind. I think Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point, which we've not ridden because we've tried several times to get to Cedar Point and had it fall through the cracks. Um, yeah, those. I think those other two are not quite as. They're tall, not as tall. But they are probably just as fast or slightly slower. This is all kind of a thrill I mean, Just experience. think about how much speed you have to have in order to, to clear 600 that, feet. That I don't think hill. we talked about how tall it was. It's 600 feet. Yeah. 600 plus. And now there's a, there's actually a drop tower yep. on the ride as well. Doom and Jaro drop of doom, which yep. we've not done. That's the tallest yeah. drop tower. Which, well, it is a pretty cool ride experience no. if you're going up the, hill crest at the same time as someone dropping it was it, the zoom and jaro drop of doom was the tallest tower drop tower in the world until icon park opened their drop tower which we won't get into because i know that's a touchy subject right now but yeah. um there are still this is why adjectives matter too because then King Khan now has the ability to say ours is the tallest that's tied to a roller coaster oh, sure. and by the way not that we're counting drop tower credits, but it would be separate. <laughs> oh my God. They're two different rides, yes. They're two completely different rides. I just want to throw that out there. Kaylee, I know you're still in the in the chat, so I wanted to throw in our most memorable coaster credits as a category as well. Mako was truly one of the best coaster experiences we've ever had. This is at SeaWorld Orlando. It is a hyper coaster by Bollinger and Malabar b &M, and it was honestly like flying. Yeah. It was like a short of the next one we're gonna point. And the, that's something actually that these two memorable credits have in common is the sensation of being an actual flight. Yep. If you were a bird flying. <laughs> Plus like Mako has like a, like a themed, um, sorry, it's getting late, station. <laughs> so there's like this cool like effect on the, like it just, yep. it's just, it just sets you up, and we waited very, oh, was very Vanessa's briefly. Oh, that's a great first hyper. You like get you get in, and there's like cool music, kind of intense, going up the lift hill. So you just set up, and then we rode it at like dusk, like it was barely there, were barely any lights. So we saw like the Orlando City skyline and stuff, and. I mean, not that there's like a skyline, but you know what I mean. Um, I can't believe Jay and Sam haven't written that <laughs> girl. No, I think they just spent a lot of time oh, yeah, at yeah. other parts. Oh, yeah. I'm just surprised. And now they can do whatever they you want. You guys are going to love this ride. It is, yeah. if it you is love Candemonium, Candemonium on steroids. Yeah, it's Candemonium. It's a like longer course. It's a better sight line. It's the wind in your hair. It's the theme music going up the lift hill and the theme station. It is the full package. And I hope... I've heard good things about Fury 325, also made by BNM, but obviously 100 feet taller. I'm I'm really excited to hear that Chad Vanessa loved Fury 325 so much. Yeah, that's I'm really sure encouraging, is, actually. I'm sure it is the uh, the peak of the BNM experience. But Mako, as it stands right now, one of the most memorable credits we've ever gotten. And we so recorded we it. it for posterity. We did. We still have it. That's cool. And they've never been to SeaWorld yet. Yeah. 
Can't wait till you guys go. Iron Quasi, yo. Memorable. That was memorable. <laughs> that was definitely the most memorable, I mean, in the last. It was the first time we got to take advantage of being Premier, not Premier, Platinum Pass holders. Platinum, with, platinum members. Platinum members. With it's push very writings. important that we do yeah. members, pass holders. I don't know. There's, There's <laughs> Everyone has their own different phrases. But yeah, um, Iron Guazi was originally just Guazi. It was a wooden coaster that was RMC'd. Rocky Mountain Construction comes in, takes out half the supports. I think they said 20% of the original, original ride, ride yeah. was left so there. Most of it's gone. Which we spoke to a guy at Busch Gardens Williamsburg who, who was convinced to get on it because he was told that it was all the supports were Guazis, which is not true because Guazi was about probably 70 to 80 feet shorter. This is a hyper. Yeah. This is an actual hyper coaster and it was our first hybrid hyper, but it was also our second RMC hybrid, which means a combination of steel Real rails wheels. and steel supports and wooden supports. And it was just, it was incredible. Yeah. And we rode it six times in one day, which yep. was also awesome because we were platinum pass holders. We were able to get in before the rest of the public. So that time in lined up perfectly. Yes. And it was, if you haven't seen our uh, Iron Gwazi vlog, we didn't do much vlogging in Bush Gardens, Tampa because I forgot batteries and I was worried that we wouldn't be able to finish the day. Um, but we did vlog We just Iron spent Gwazi. all of our juice. Yeah, we dumped all the on... GoPro batteries into our rides on Iron Gwazi, Iron Gwazi. and they were, well spent in my opinion. A perfect end to a perfect day at Bush Gardens. Which was an awesome park, by the way. You should definitely visit if you have it. Yes. Last category. Bucket Our list. Bucket list. Things. It only grows. It only grows. It only grows. When <laughs> all of these are checked off, there will be more. <laughs> <laughs> so all of these for the most part are international parks. This is a suspended suspended story coaster is the official term that they're using for Arthur and the Invisibles at Europa Park. And it is, I mean, this image doesn't do it justice Remember because there I are dark Remember how I said I elements. love dark rides mm -hmm. and coasters? I can't wait to ride this thing. I, I like to make the argument, it's a weird argument and no one understands it, so brace yourselves. But I like to make the argument that every coaster should tell a story. It doesn't have to be a dark ride story, but dark ride stories do it best. So if you have a coaster like Hagrid's and Arthur and the Invisibles, and there's actually a How to Train Your Dragon one in the Emirates that looks incredible. I don't know when we'll ever make it there. This one is in Europe, so this is more achievable. Yeah. But um, these types of coasters are some of the best made in the world because they just do it all. Family coasters, I feel like, are more accessible to broader audiences by nature. And I don't need intensity to enjoy the coaster. No. I feel like I just need fun. I just yeah. want to have fun. Yep. Meanwhile, you have other coasters like Fahrenheit and Hershey Park that its story is like you go up, spaghetti ball rides over. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, every I'm like, hey, hey, this is a story. <laughs> it's not my kind of story. I do ride that one fairly often for being yeah. a vertical coaster. Right, Welcome it's back, long. guys. We're still here. <laughs> We're still here. We're almost done. Wrapping We're up, almost wrapping done. up, wrapping up. <laughs> Space Fantasy at Universal, Universal Studios, Studios Japan. Japan. This is a weird one because we don't usually like spinning coasters, but this is a very unique ride. And Katie was talking about how all rides need music. This ride is all music Has from start to finish. an amazing soundtrack. Amazing soundtrack. You can actually go and listen to the soundtrack on YouTube. There's a theme park music channel that we, we live and breathe. Um, the only issue with this ride is, is that it's hard to get on. <laughs> it, well, besides it being in Japan, is they frequently like to like do do like a you know a hyperspace mountain kind of this, temporary yeah. theme, and we really just want to ride the original ride. So we're hoping whenever we do make it up to Japan, it's not in its temporary rethemed version. This is a not often original. Ride. As in, like it, it. As Katie said, it's constantly overlaid with VR for whatever the anime trend is. Right as we speak, right now, it is running as an Attack on Ride, Attack, Attack on Titan. 
Attack on Ride. Attack on Ride. Attack which I know on Vanessa Titan. would probably I know, lose yeah. her mind Vanessa, over. Chad and Vanessa love Attack on Titan. And I don't hate Attack on Titan, but I really want to experience But if I can only ride, ride this ride once, yeah. I want it to be its original form. Yeah, we don't dart back and forth from Japan often. <laughs> Plus, right now, I don't think they're allowing international visitors back at the parks yet, but... Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Probably not this year, but it is on our bucket list. We really do want to experience this. Terron. At. This is the crown. At uh, Fantasia, Land. Fantasia Land. In Germany. Fantasia Land has been our number one must visit since probably our first trip to Universal when we started really researching theme, theme parks. parks. Yeah. Fantasia Land is the Disneyland of Germany. It is. A more intense Disneyland. It's got more of a gothic. Probably more theme. of like, yeah, more of a universal. More of a guess. universal. But, but it is it is off compared to Disneyland because it has a lot of those magical elements and the rides are packed on top of each other. It's a very small footprint. Terran is an Intamin Blitz coaster, which means it's multi-launch the same way that Hagrid's is, and it is and, and like Velocicoaster. It is supposedly one of the smoothest, best running rides in the world. Everyone rushes to Terran first thing in the morning. And this is a ride that's been running for minimum of a decade. It's yeah. been there for a while, but it is still as smooth as the day it opened. And the theming is, you. this this picture doesn't do it all justice, but there's stonework. You can see it's like over top of rooftops and mm -hmm. whatnot. Like, And it what, it goes through the waterfall. Well, not yeah. through the waterfall, so, but like, like up the waterfall alongside. They just, we just know what, Intamin and you know different parks are capable of when you can put that blitz bit ugh, when you put a blitz coaster up in a park that's this dedicated that to just theming. keeps launching over and over uh, again like Cheetah Hunt but better yeah <laughs> oh, it's presumably but yes yeah it just it just looks so cool I did miss a couple of comments while we were talking about Arthur like Black Diamond don't need to be intense Black Diamond at Knobles is an awesome dark ride that dark is ride it a coaster? coaster is it a coaster Coaster credit? Bonus credit? Did we? I thought we said it I, We didn't put it as a coaster credit on our list, but if we have that credit, then it's 110. Okay. It's, it's on rails, but it's more of a dark ride. It doesn't... It moved on like a... You know, comparable. it does coast. It's comparable. It, it coasts, but it gets caught by the... But so does... Oh, man. I think... <laughs> mm, I think I think people were counting it as a coaster. I guess maybe we have 110. It's a fun dark ride experience with a few coasters. Oh, elements. maybe he's talking about a different one. Black Diamond at... Oh, is there no, another Black Diamond? No, they're, no. They're, they're talking about Damien the Damien already asking if it's at Dollywood. It's at Knobles. Um, so the, the... I'm assuming that's what we're talking about, Black Diamond <laughs> mining. We have a couple of Knobles vlogs. They're not the most recent that we've done because we haven't been in 2022 yet. And I don't think we actually... No, we did one in 2021 because we went with Chad and Vanessa. Yeah. For, that was our one vlog visit to Knobles, but yeah. Did you see that? <laughs> it's That's all good. okay. It's all good. We are naturally this confusable. This is a safe place to be confused. The theming of Fly. At yeah, Fantasia Fly Land. looks amazing Every too. Every single ride. I want to do the Land swings at Fantasia Land. Theme. Every single thing. You could spend a week at Fantasia Land little, and get virtually. Their happy. little like kids <laughs> section or whatever just. I just yeah. put another picture in there. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you <laughs> can see, just... like, you see, like, the impressive, like, rock work and stuff. Here. Yeah, I like... felt the French, I mean, they're, they're definitely, the French fry rocks are inspired by Disneyland's original Tomorrowland rocks. Maybe. There's definitely some inspiration there. I mean, yeah, I, we definitely bar, stuff gets borrowed all the time in the theme park world. I mean, have you seen, <laughs> if you've, the other German theme park we want to go to is, um, Europa Park. Mm -hmm. Which and, we talked about for Arthur. Yeah, which is where the Arthur ride is, and they definitely have like a mini version of Spaceship Earth at their park. <laughs> As in, like, I don't know what they're talking the about. The Epcot ball. <laughs> but there is a roller coaster inside theirs, and that is not the case for <laughs> anything at Walt Disney World. Although, I think it was Ari and, and Jamie that mentioned earlier, Lord knows if I'll ever find the comment now. 
but uh, I know they've talked about how Guardians of the Galaxy was opening yes. May 27th, y'all. Oh, I'm so excited. Do not come to us for Disney news because we don't keep in touch. No, we <laughs> but, do not. But this piece, if you're hearing it for the first time, to be May 27th, Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster. First of its kind to have a reverse launch and it's going to be well known as a story coaster in Disney. It's opening at Epcot. It will be in the and that coaster is going to have music. former future or i'm walking out it should have music it... but i'm disappointed that it won't have any i know <laughs> stupid well i won't say it kaylee asked if anyone has forever. been to dollywood you've not been to dollywood but you really want to go we guys do, do check out um jay and sam the theme park foodies i think jay is still in the chat i don't know if sam is but they have been to dollywood they have been actually a couple times at least jay has and it, they did an awesome job documenting yeah so. they've got lots of got we will make it to dollywood tours, eventually and we are excited to go stuff, food stuff <laughs> if you wanted some insider knowledge yeah we will get you some dollywood content eventually guys i promise but in the meantime you should definitely go and check out jay and sam's they did an awesome job uh, <laughs> Say fast enough. I did that earlier. I took a nap before this. I Real would quick, be alive if we I that. do want to throw in a moment of silence since we're talking about Fantasia Land for Temple of the Night, which has since been rethemed to a ride called Crazy Bats, which is almost entirely VR. It's just a aero rail coaster in a dark space. But the music is so The catchy. music from Temple of the Nighthawk was really catchy. The music really from catchy. Temple of the Nighthawk. Still, to this very day, one of the most played Actually, things on, on my personal YouTube account. Actually, before we even knew uh, that much about Fantasia Land, Tim was like, found this Temple of the Nighthawk music and was like, this is on a roller coaster On ride in soundtrack. Europe. I was like, this we like, is wow. going to be the best roller coaster. And then we started like soft planning a trip to Germany, which didn't pan out, obviously. And then that's when he found out that Temple of the Nighthawk didn't is exist. now crazy bad. Didn't and exist so anymore. Bad. He was so sad. I was devastated. You guys don't even know. As the British say, I was gutted. gutted. It was awful. But I got it. It's going to be fun. Fantasia Land is still very much on the bucket list, and we are excited to go somewhere. But we need kind of this whole situation to calm down. So everyone cross their fingers and send thoughts and prayers. Maybe 2023. <laughs> Maybe 2023. Maybe. Our creator spotlight this week goes to Hannah Enchanted, which is, Hannah's been a, a really dedicated, last week I actually touched on like a couple of channels that have been really supportive of us and we really don't feel like we do enough to support them. Same thing this week, guys. Hannah from Hannah Enchanted is lovely. She does a lot of lounge fly reviews, but she also does a lot of Disney content out and about. And she's recently been posting about a comic and, uh, Wow, what's the word? Comic collectibles shop that just opened in her local mall that she goes to oh, often yeah, and they have like cool. cosplayers. Out. It's really fun. It looks so like definitely it. check her out, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Chad and Vanessa, who are in the chat tonight. We've been on every been one of our live streams. Dedicated to us from the beginning and we really appreciate it. We cannot, I, honestly, I can't tell you guys enough how much we appreciate you guys supporting us because you've been in it since the beginning almost. They started following us pretty early we, on. Yeah. We've crossed paths only once officially, yes. but we've been right behind them at a lot of yeah. places. Like we've hit Busch Gardens Williamsburg the weekend after they hit Busch Gardens Williamsburg and Hershey Park and so on and so forth. And we love talking to them. They do great vlogs as well. And they're traveling a lot more than we are, to be honest. So you can see some really exciting things on there. They also, I love, they, they stay in Airbnbs a lot when they travel and they always do a little video about them. So you want to see like a unique or fun like Airbnb to check out. Like they, I think they just did like a troll, a trolley car on their, like, um, I think their December trip. That was really cute. Yeah. So I enjoy seeing those things too. They just have a lot. Real quick, I do. I did see see this comment. Michael Bear has been following us since we were at forty three subscribers. Thank you so much. Oh Michael. my gosh, that's, really, that's awesome that you stuck it out because the content. I'll be honest, we haven't always had the best content. I mean, we're so, still I, learning, and growing. we're always learning. I really appreciate you sticking it out, and hopefully, we've been delivering better content yeah, since. Hopefully, it's been we good. Definitely growth. appreciate it. Thank you so much for shouting um, and. 
shouting out. Crystal from the Crystal Palace is our last creator spotlight tonight. Um, she is wonderful. And I think if not a good friend of Jay and Sam's, definitely a loyal fan. And <laughs> they are loyal fans of her as well. Um, she is constantly cranking out new content. She travels to Florida a lot. So she does a lot of Disney and Universal content. Love her energy and love how supportive she is of other channels like ours that are comparatively smaller. So we really appreciate everything that she's done for us. And we do not do enough for anybody on this list. We don't do enough for a lot of channels. So we're constantly feeling like we're shirking our duties as YouTubers in supporting other channels. And we're sorry, we get busy. But we do want to shout these channels out as channels that you guys should go check out and perhaps follow and subscribe if you're so inclined. Um, either Everyone's way. Everyone's got something to bring to the table, guys. Everyone. We've, we've just learned so much from this community. Yeah. We've so. done a lot of growing. A lot of growing. Chad and Vanessa were, we, we were at Six Flags Good Adventure during Halloween, same day, just the opposite side of the park. Uh, oh, Six Flags America. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I, Which we just only discovered My later. mind just rolled straight back into the better Six Flags Park. No offense, America, but Great Adventure. <laughs> Play all this Or Christmas. I don't remember. But we did go to... We did... Oh, no. It was Christmas because it was Osmo Six Flags Rocket. Michael's been around since the Osmo Pocket. Oh, Pocket my gosh. The, the, the Osmo Pocket. R.I.P. the Osmo Pocket. Right here. It's dead. It just won't turn on. <laughs> the battery has swelled to the point where it exploded. So the Osmo is no more, but I keep it here as a memoir. We still use some <laughs> time lapses that we took on it, though, in our videos. So. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We're going to go ahead and pack it in. Our next installment is going to be on April 19th. It's going to be about skip the line passes. And that will be the week before we do some That's traveling to a location. Also, that... probably going to be a little bit of a debate to skip the line. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> we like to stir up controversy here. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, we're all still friends after this night. But join us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We really appreciate the support. We appreciate all the comments because. We love these conversations, and obviously we don't know everything. So no. sometimes we have to have input to, to learn and grow as creators. Um, but it's been a fun night. I learned a lot. I I will Tim? accept the bonus credit argument. We may for, have convinced. <laughs> we may have convinced a new a new way to count coaster credit. Now I got it. Now I got homework. I can go back through and update our coaster credits. Bonus credit. It's gonna keep me up all night. Now. I hope you're happy. I hope everyone's happy. I feel good about. It. <laughs> I feel great. And yeah, Chad and Vanessa are headed to Florida shortly. I know That's they've been right. talking they, it up for a while. They're finally so. doing their Disney trip. Yep. So I'm so excited for you hopefully guys. Hopefully you guys can line up your annual pass holder or DVC previews of Guardians with oh, that yeah. trip. I hope you guys can because I would really love for you guys to experience that. Because we probably won't it. be back to Disney or in Orlando have, for a bit. Yeah. So. We may plan like a quickie trip, but that's not in the works yet. <laughs> All right, everyone. Anything left to say? Besides the end? <laughs> Besides what you were going to say? All yeah, right. I think that's it. Thanks, everyone, again. I'm Tim. I'm Katie. And every day... is a new adventure. And we'll see you next time. Thank Bye. you so much for tuning in. Good night. We will catch you Bye. later. Good night. Where's the end? Here it is. Thank you.